Hey guys, National Master Canty here, and today we're looking at one of my favorite lines in the C3 Sicilian, which is the Alapin play with the white pieces. And today you guys are going to get a, a, a quick synopsis inside the world of the C3 Sicil for the kill. Now before we get started guys, smash the subscribe button, smash the like button, share this video, all that good stuff. So you know when I post all the new stuff, we really appreciate it here at the channel guys. So let's just get right into it. Let's go. So now with the white pieces, the C3 Sicilian, I really like it because I've been playing it honestly five, six years now and uh, I'm not looking back at all. So it starts with the white pieces. Here we go. E4. C5. So, of course, we have the Sicilian here. E any E4 player, if you are an E4 player, you are usually an attacking player. Usually. That's what I tell my students. So, if you are a new person to the channel, you've never seen these videos, or uh, you're just a new player, period, or maybe you're not across 1500, you're not across 16, 1700 yet, you just want to know E4, what kind of player are you? E4 is uh, attacking style chess, and I like this kind of stuff. Open games is what they'll say. So, e4 c5 c5 what this is about is actually just taking control of the d4 square here and there's a thing guys i'm not sure if you know this but i have a book uh by my buddy roman dg house really shout out to him i got some lessons from him before but with, with that being said he played um in the book that i did have which i still use is a knight of, after knight f3 right this is regular sicilian let's just make like a d6 and go almost knight dwarf kind of stuff d4 right after the capture is on d4 okay after the capture zone d4, they usually take back with the queen of the knight. Nine ninety percent of the time, it's going to be with the knight. When they take here with the knight, here's the thing to notice. So, what they say, grandmaster level stuff, is that you're giving up a center pawn, one of these, for a wing pawn, which is worth less. Roman Roman told me that you should think of these as like dollar amounts in a way. So, of course, this is a dollar, this is a dollar, and then everything else on the other sides. Here are 10 cents less respectively. So in a way, you're actually, this is a 90 cent pawn and this is a dollar pawn. With that being said, if I trade this 90 cent pawn for a dollar pawn, I get to keep the change. That's exactly what he says. So it's keeping the change. So you actually gain a little bit more than just like, oh, I got a center pawn, you know, but this is the standard move, which is so crazy. I was almost never into this. Honestly, I never studied Sicilian theory growing up through the ranks. I, I like never studied for white from when I started playing the Sicilian when I got over 2200 USCF I started playing the Sicilian as black but uh, at first as white here I would always just play it and not really know didn't know many classical games from this I would honestly just play off the head and I got up to a very high rating by just doing that um, so it, it tells you you don't have to study that much Sicilian theory but you do need to study some because you will have some games where you're gonna get in trouble so honestly I, I didn't like you know playing it too much but after a while i finally got into the c3 sicilian or aka the c3 sicil for the kill so here we go c5 c3 what is it about c3 sicilian is about keeping both pawns in the center and, and i don't have to trade one of my good center pawns for a lesser pawn to say the least so i'm going to go c3 then i'm going to play d4 and then after d4 you're going to capture capture and, and there's multiple ways white can black can go after this so d4 actually uh, let's make a move my favorite one of all time so if you're watching this don't play this line on me don't play it and if you if you didn't watch this video oh my goodness hey look you know what i just hope you don't play this line knight c6 is the is my f absolute 1000 percent favorite if they play knight c6 pause the video here what do you play you don't need to pause the video it's d4 of course, d4 is the move here. After pawn takes, pawn takes, you have a number of ways to go here. I'm going to show you a few real quick, but um, there's some. There, I'm going to show you the, uh, a few, and there's one that's super complicated. I know the stuff like the back of my hand and the front of my hand, okay? So this stuff is very nice. If you look at this for, for white right now, I have two pawns in the center. So this is very, very good. Uh, yeah, they're slightly weak, I would say, and mostly this one. Or sorry, mostly the d pawn because I can't be protected by a pawn. I just can't. I can't be protected by a pawn, so of course I am slightly weak. But the, this one can be, so it's not as weak. It's not as weak, but it is slightly weak, I guess. But this is an extremely strong center, and black needs to be extremely accurate here. Or you're jumping off the deep end, that's not a move. Send a stretcher, get them out of here, all that other stuff. So if G6 happens, which I've seen many, many times, G6, pause the video. If I give you 10 to 15 seconds here, what would you play as white here? Yeah. 
with that being said, that was not 15 seconds, but you should have paused the video. Now, here, if G6, if G6 happens, white plays D5. I always tell my students, you need to make sure you're threatening. Make threats every move if you can. Not every move. Sometimes you can't make a threat. Sometimes you have to make a move that sets up the threat. So, D5, I hit the knight. You have a few options here. Knight B4 is not a move. Why would you do this? You actually could, but let's look at it. If Knight B3, Knight B4... You know, I tell my students when they cross the line, they got to go. And this is exactly what's going on. He's in my territory by himself. No friends, nobody else. So we're going to bully him. A3, you got to go. Get up out of here right now. Knight goes to A6, and he's looking crazy on this side of the board. And I can just do a number of things. Knight to C3. I'm not into taking this because I always usually want to keep my king's bishop, especially in E4 openings. You like to keep your king's bishop because a lot of times it ends up here for mating threats. Not in this manner because this is a pawn chain and a pawn wall which needs to be softened and broken with like H4, H5. Taking this and maybe F4, F5. Just bullying this, playing E5 and finally capturing. But at the end of the day, you could capture here. I'm just not a big fan of it. Knight to C3 is another one. Knight F3. F4 is a move, and then knight F3. Knights work best behind the pawns, not in front of them. I learned that from Jeremy Silman, of course. Queen to D4 is uh, another move, and uh, maybe even E5. But uh, I've, I've, I've like never ever had this. Knight B4 never never had it. Usually, I'm getting knight B8 or knight to E5. Knight E5 is my favorite. So shout out to everyone that's all that's been hit with this knight E5 move and and and, and <laughs> lost a piece in the process. Okay, white to move here. I'll give you five seconds. It's f4. If you said f4, absolutely. f4, you're hitting the knight, and the knight has nowhere to go, no squares to go to. You'd be surprised at the level of strength of people that actually play this. I've had masters play knight e5 here, and it's not a move. f4, and you can just start a new one. Just, hey, let's make it easy on both of us. Let's just start a new game. This knight has nowhere to go. Knight to g4, I take it. Knight f3, of course, is self-explanatory. Same with knight to d3. This one doesn't look like it's lost, but it's immediately just gone. There's a trick and trap on move six. I am up a full piece immediately. Absolutely gross for black. So after d4, g6 doesn't work. Well, how about like, let's do another move. d6. Let's try d6. Well, in a way, I like to push these pawns again. So after d5, there's knight e5. Then after knight e5, f4 anyway. Knight g4, I've never seen, but it does happen. So, I mean, uh, not that I've never seen it. It will happen sometimes. Knight g4, but they usually don't do this. And if knight g4, I guess maybe queen b6 is the intention, but again, I can just kick him with h3. Knight f6, I can play knight to c3, and my intention is to play e5, so something random. Bishop d7, e5 happens, and then a capture, capture. This knight's looking ridiculous. It's actually trapped, because everything is, uh, man, look at the, like, another trapped knight. I mean, this is, this is gross. This is absolutely gross here. So uh, there's another move, knight to d7, then I'll play knight f3, and then after knight f6, pause the video, what would you do here? The move here is e5 actually after e5 pawn takes pawn takes whoa these pawns are now went from d4 and e4 to e5 and d5 i gotta do something and i need to do it fast knight g4 you might as well play aggressive and then i got e6 what e6 what if i just take this i dare you pawn takes pawn takes the knight needs to go somewhere knight e5 knight f6 i don't care where you put the knight i'm going to check you and it's a wrap here. You can start a new one. The king can't run anywhere. We're going to have to defend here. This is absolutely atrocious. Oh my goodness, get this position off the screen. So this is exactly what could happen in one of your games if you are playing the C3 Cecile for the kill. So now uh, this is one of my favorites here, of course, but this is not even close to what really happens a lot of times too. I've seen E5 was a move. Now the standard, the best move by book, and by everything else is actually d5 in this position. This is the one that I face absolute most, especially when I'm playing super strong players. They go d5, and honestly, it's pretty tough for them because they're playing right into my prep. I've hit this line. I've hit this with the engine almost every single day. I'm hitting lines in this uh, position in particular with uh, the engine, with some, uh, some homework here, some home prep stuff. So after pawn takes d5, you could go e5. But e5, honestly, he's okay. And if you go knight f3, which you absolutely could, let's make a move for black. Uh, what's a good move? e6, not good. Not that it's not good, but like you want to keep the bishop outside the pawn chain. So you're banking on knight f3 so you can play bishop g4 to keep the bishop outside the pawn chain. 
problem is if you go e6 is stuck in here and it says this is actually gross for i can just play knight f3 in here it's, it's literally like a french defense delayed but uh, at this point it doesn't seem too good for black here uh g6 though maybe g6 and then if knight f3 intention for g6 is to put bishop on g7 bishop g4 bishop e2 and get out of the way kind of thing so it absolutely can happen in that way um but after pawn takes d4 um pawn takes d4 we have d5 on the board what you're supposed to do is white is take this okay nine nine times out of ten they're going to play queen takes d5 if they go knight b4 which is terrible queen a4 check and have a nice day i'm just going to pick up that knight extremely easy you can't go back because i'm taking the knight here so after queen takes d5 well this pawn's hanging it's an isolated pawn black seems like they're in a the driver's seat you know what knight f3 defend it oh hey bishop oops sorry bishop to g4 here we go i'm hitting this knight remove the defender that's the name of the theme remove the defender and take this pawn so if i do something like i don't know bishop to e2 actually bishop e2 doesn't work I mean, not that it doesn't work for for uh, why it works for black oh it works for white, not black. So if I go bishop to e2 and bishop takes f3, bishop takes, queen takes d4, ouch, bishop takes c6, and the queen drops, removing the defender once again, actually. But this is not the move that we play. We actually play knight to c3 and provoke him into taking on f3. We provoke them into taking on f3. It's insane. Absolutely one of my favorite things to play here. After bishop takes f3, and especially only the, usually only the strongest players play bishop takes f3. Uh, because they know that this is first off going to be doubled and actually black can take this pawn what what are you doing basically w what are you even doing is what black's saying right now watch this looks are very deceiving in chess extremely deceiving after queen takes knight takes white to move here guys think about the idea here I'll actually i really recommend you pause the video here and try to figure out what what the plan is for white i'm going to give five seconds of a pause here now we're going to keep moving, but I highly recommend that you pause the video and try to figure this out. Okay, why to move? Now, you have knight d5. This is hanging. This is a thing. You feel like you lost almost, but here it is. Knight to b5. Whoa, what does that even do? How? There's many ways. You have knight e6, knight takes f3, knight to c2, knight to c, x and knight c6 is not a move, and knight takes b5. But with that being said, we're only going to cover uh, probably one of the fun lines here. Or we'll cover maybe one or two. But knight takes b5 and knight to c2. Knight takes b5 I've had many times. And the problem here, looks are very deceiving in chess. Black's development is not there. So with that being said, it's going to take him at least four tempi here to get everything out. One, you got to move the pawn to get the bishop out. Or this one, doesn't matter. I don't care how you do it. You got to move one of the pawns. That's one move. You got to move the knight. That's the second. You got to move the bishop. That's the third. And then you finally get the rook out after four, maybe even five, because the king got to move two to get the rook out. So with that being said, you almost down five tempi here, which is gross because I, I can, I mean, I got files here. My bishops are open and this one's easy to get to the diagonal. So watch this. I've had this happen many times in games. King here. I go bishop to f4 because I like to cut off this square for the king. Sometimes they'll go e6. I think e5, surprisingly, is the better move. But e6, I play rook check. Bam. Rook check. This is beautiful. Watch this, guys. Sometimes they'll go king c8, but I've had king e7. And then what do you do here? Bishop to g5. Reverse the move order. I tell my students this all the time. If you go rook d7 here, which is fine, he can run king f6. But what if I reverse the move order and play bishop g5 first? Now he can't run. I take away the run square. You can block with the knight or the pawn. Doesn't matter. If you go knight f6, I'm actually still pending this. So rook to d7, this is absolutely gross. And you have almost a windmill here. Almost. Because you can't really grab anything much but this pawn. I can play king e2 and the rooks are coming in. You still haven't developed anything. Everything is on the back rank. Mayday. Somebody call the ambulance, send a stretcher, all that other stuff. You're going to need some help here. This is, this is bad. Really, really bad for black, right? So same thing with f6. This is even worse, by the way. Rook here. And then king here, I usually take this pawn first, and then I come back and take the other pawn. I think the engine has something better. I can't remember. Rook takes b7, king d8, rook d7, king e8. What's wrong with king c8? Oh, hold on. Let's let's see this. Engine says, let's check this, right? So it actually says rook takes b7, right? Because I forgot this is hanging, so we have to do something about that first. Rook takes b7, check. King d8. Then it says rook d7. So, of course, if king e8, you can just snap here. Let's just put that on the board so you guys can see it. Discovery check. Thanks for the rook. Thanks for everything. It's an everything must go sale. It's just clearance. Got to get rid of it. Now, if king to c8, king to c8, it says castle. Wow. We got to see this, guys. After castles, as pawn takes g5, let's say this happens is mate in four. The moves that follow are rook to c1, king b8. 
Can you find the other two moves? Can anyone find them? Take your time here. I'm going to turn the engine off right here. Hopefully you, didn't, you weren't able to see it. White to move. Where do you go? Here it is. Bishop a6. There's nothing you can do about this. You actually do have a move. So let's look at it. 97. 97. Or rook b7 is made. And also rook d8 is made too, right? Well, made after after blocking. So rook b7 is made on the move after sacrificing a piece. Uh, rook check here. There's made two different ways. However you want to do it. You can do it with your eyes closed here. Wow. Gross. Man, that's crazy. All from that. Taking on b5, you'd be like, oh, just take the knight. It's not a move. Right. So let's go back here. Let's check this out. Knight to uh, knight b5, knight c2 check. I'm getting a rook, right? Oh, thanks for the rook. But I get one too. I'll show you a sample line. King to d7, knight takes a8. And now this knight's not getting out. But what about my knight? Well, he's still behind on the tempi. So let's see it. e5, bishop e3. I'm going to snap this pawn. If I get rid of this one, I can get my knight out. A, a lot of times I've seen bishop d6 happen. Bishop d6 happens. I snap on a7. And my knight's getting out. Knight to f6, knight check. Very nice move. King c6, because the idea is to put the bishop here. We play bishop to d3. To get him out of here and actually keeping uh keeping an eye here i'm going to move my king around so after bishop c5 king to e2 it's actually king d2 um this is more accurate according to the engine after check you go here knight h5 and then you check and then bring the king over to f1 but uh if they do take this and you check first not taking the knight and in between move the king has to go somewhere of course you can't stay around his bishop and then bishop takes and i get the knight too oh my goodness how did he come up a piece i don't even know this is ludicrous it doesn't make sense but it's c3 sicilian or c3 cecile for the kill absolutely beautiful stuff here it's such an, an amazing opening especially one of these lines here the knight c6 stuff white's thinking they're doing good or black's thinking they're doing just fine especially right here this is like this is my favorite line because people think right here that they they got it it's over they like oh what do you why what are you doing why this is gross you got double pawns here double pawns and i just took a pawn from you you're you're down a pawn this is gross like but then the next moves takes takes and knight b5 and it gets wild there's like five different ways to go here very in-depth stuff and this is one of my favorite openings oh this is honestly my favorite opening besides scotch gambit accelerated dragon but c3 cecile for the kill i'm actually working on a course for it for you guys too so uh look out for that that will be coming very very soon as i'm doing the videos and getting the content ready for you guys so of course this will be covered in detail with pgns for you guys and everything and notes and stuff so uh but this is uh an extremely popular uh opening honestly for for black or at least how they're playing it with knight c6 I, i've seen this a lot but i don't see it as much as like the regular sicilians like other stuff you have other lines too e3 c uh c3 you have the d5 line of course d5 gets tricky you also have knight f6 you also have e6 which goes into a french defense advance if we go d4 d5 you can go french advance but i'm not a fan as white i'm not a fan as a french advance book now the book i do have that i lived by that helped me make my course and just helped me uh, do so much with the C3 Sicilian and become an advocate for it. Um, in the book, it actually says that you should be playing the advanced variant. He was like, oh, you can go right into a better version or you go into the advanced French, which psychologically, I think this says this in the book, psychologically, um, if you're playing the Sicilian, you're not thinking to play a French, right? So um, Sicilian players don't like French and French don't like Sicilian. I mean, it depends on who you're playing, you know, especially when you're playing strong players. Sometimes they could play, sometimes they've played it before. And you'll so you'd be surprised at how bad, or sometimes if you're not familiar with the positions, it could get for you as white. And I'm not a fan of it. So actually my recommendation is actually taking here in an exchange format, playing knight f3, bishop to b5. And you, you do need to know the theory. If the bishop goes to e7 or moves and you do, you, you, uh, you actually capture it twice. I'll show you here. Knight f3, knight c6. Bishop b5, bishop e7, capture, capture, castles, knight e7, and then you go knight d2, knight b3. We bully the isolated pawn, and we work on this for a while. So this is more of a positional c3 Sicilian, but of course, every opening has their tactics and the positional side. And this is usually a little bit of the positional side for white here. White just has a comfortable game, no weaknesses, no isolated pawn, and we have a target. So a lot of times we can end up winning this pawn, very flexible and etc so that's one line um, of that one but my absolute favorite guys one of my favorite lines to face here is this one right here so if you ever see knight c6 oh my goodness i'm so hyped i'm literally pre-moving the moves here because they usually do this then they go d5 and i already have this the, i already have this on pre-move so i already have everything on pre-move bishop g4 knight c3 
and then takes, takes, and takes. Queen takes, knight takes, knight to b5. Knight to c2 is a move. Knight takes f3 is just really bad due to like king e2. You take the knight and like I'm getting one or the other. You're, you're better off either taking the knight or playing check. That's it. They also have another move here, which is e5, which I think I've only gotten maybe once or twice ever, uh, which is not good though. But knight to e6 is another one, which I never get either. And actually you're supposed to take here on a7. Gross. What do you mean take it on a7? It's hanging. Watch this. Knight takes, rook takes, bishop check first, okay? King got to go somewhere, then bishop to e3. And it's really, it's like, wow, where does the rook go? In a way, almost, you know, because you're, you're in a lot of trouble. I think it's rook a8. If rook a8, what happens, right? So if you go rook a8, isn't it just gross? Yeah, it's over. So bishop check, right? King here. Uh, best move, rook c1. King here. Bishop d7. I actually had this before. Rook c8 is made. There's no way to get out of it. Gross. Absolutely gross. So you also have um, knight c7. And then it's rook c1. Oh, it's rook c1. I thought it was checking in rook c1. But rook c1, let's see rook c8. Ooh, is that just mate? Dang. Oh, my goodness. Mate in the center of the board. Mate in the center of the board. Let that sit there for a minute. You can pause the video. You can get screens, capture this. That's beautiful, though. Mate in the center of the board. Now, that's if he goes back. And you don't have anywhere else to go on this on this file, right? Nowhere else to go. Rook here, I can just take it. And this is the best move. Yeah, I'm down a piece. But also, look at the compensation you have here. Engine says that this is equal, even though I'm down a piece. But of course, there's two evaluations. I tell my students this all the time. You need to have the human one and you need to have the engine evaluation. As a human here, you got two rooks, open king, and this is very weak. Absolutely, I'm feeling good. And he's like 410B behind. This is they're very difficult for black yeah, as a human. And then, of course, rook a5 runs into easy bishop b6 check and maybe even mating almost, almost mating. But bishop takes and that, that happens there. So 96, I'm snapping on a7. That's a sweet move. Like knight takes a7. You know how many times people are able to take this? 96. I've, well, again, I've probably gotten on one hand, but I do remember the information. Knight takes a7. So, all right, guys, this is today's video on the c3 Cecil for the kill. One of my favorite lines to face here. Look out for the c3 Sicilian series as I'm going to analyze games, look at other stuff, show you guys how to play it. I'm coming out with a course as well and etc. Um, thank you guys for watching the video today. Put some comments under of what you learned today. Anything um, cool? And etc. Uh, I'm also giving up the uh, membership site. I have the membership site here for you guys. I'm not giving up, but uh, letting you guys be uh, available to the membership site uh, that will be right under the video. You can actually become a member of the GM Factory there, where we post videos every week for you guys to get better at chess. There, it's usually ten bucks a month or a couple other pricing things on there. You can check it right under the video on there, guys. Make sure you catch the stream, twitch.tv slash gmcanty. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Anything else, reach out to me if you if you want to have any questions, lessons, stuff like that, guys. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. We in here.